look, there's a lot of stuff that I hate in this world. It's why you listen to the podcast, right? Or maybe you agree, maybe you don't. But I know one thing that everybody hates, and that's bad sleep. I hate it more than anybody else. I had bad sleep last night. That's why I'm so irritated now. But maybe you're lying in bed just trying to get to sleep in the first place. Or maybe you're a hot sleeper, so you're waking up dripping in sweat. That's why I'm glad to partner with GhostBed. They're a family-owned company, and they've been around for 20 years, so they know what they're doing. They don't just slap together mattresses like some of these other companies. They actually take the time to make a high-quality, made-in-the-USA mattress that's going to help you get the sleep you deserve, and it's going to last. If you're a hot sleeper, you'll want to check out the Ghost Bed Lux, which is dubbed the coolest mattress in the world. Try out your mattress for 101 nights with their sleep trial. Shipping is free, and most orders ship within 24 hours of checking out. Listeners can get 30% off mattresses, plus two free pillows, or get 40% off when you bundle a mattress with their adjustable base. Use promo code LEWIS at ghostbed.com slash LEWIS for a limited time. This could, it could all go horribly wrong at any minute. Thank you, that's Jeff Stilson, and uh, we are, as he said, in, in beautiful Palm Desert, where the, the sun today is actually on the ground. It, it just kissed the earth today. In beautiful Palm Desert, in, and we're at the McCallum Theater, and uh, I would say, if you're gonna come here, um, look, at the time of year <laughs> that you're coming, because there are times when it's not, uh, it, it was 100 today, or so they told me, it doesn't matter, it's just so fucking hot, you don't care. <laughs> Could you go, really, it was only 96? Fuck you, you fuck. <laughs> it was 1,006. <laughs> you kid me? Son of a, it's the first place I've ever been uh, it, it, it's the exact equivalent of living, if you hate the cold, if you're living in fucking Fairbanks, Alaska. It's exactly the same thing. You don't want to go out, you open the door and go, oh, fuck! And you feel the wind and it goes right up your balls. This, this is you open the door to walk out, you get two steps, you go, why the fuck do I want it? Why? Why? I'm just going to go here and lay down on the floor where it's cold. I don't know what you do. Is 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 the uh, AC ever gone off here? Yeah. It has, yeah. and you didn't just and, and then the and the place didn't rise as one and kill each other. Yeah. How long? How long? Three days. Three days? Oh fuck! I would be. Uh, you none of you stayed. You fucking sissies. You wouldn't have stayed. You, what did you? No, you're fucking nuts if you stayed. No, that's, it's a dry heat. That used to be true. There's still, they talk about it as a dry heat here. They're, they've lost, they've completely lost touch with any reality. I used to come here, I started coming here 15, 20 years ago maybe, and it used to be dry. There was a dry heat. And then they couldn't grow enough shit here. They couldn't water enough shit. They couldn't do enough shit. They couldn't put enough water into the, and now it's not fucking dry. It's just enough humidity that when it's hot, then it's fucking hyper hot. <laughs> but I'll let them speak for themselves. This is from uh, Ayla Patino. And she had to say, it's too hot. <laughs> That's all she had to say. And then Guy Campochiaro, too many old fucks in Palm Desert. <laughs> now, what's interesting about what the two of them just said is that 
I could have, they could have called me on the phone and I could have said, they would have said, what do you think? I would have said, wow, what do you think about me moving to Palm Desert? I would say, it's too hot and there are a lot of old fucks there. <laughs> You're acting like surprised. You can't fucking be surprised. This is Jennifer P. I'm 45 and I'm the youngest person at this show. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're fuck not. No, you're fucking not. Okay, but it was funny. But you're not. Because a lot of the people who are older you, than you are actually younger than you. And a lot of the people who are younger than you are actually older than you. So that's the way life is. But she went on to say, I've been reminded by a lovely senior volunteer to push B in the elevator to get to the balcony level. And here I am with all my elders and there's no essential B on this floor. A bathroom! Well, I'm sorry that you're up there in the balcony peeing in the very plush seats. <laughs> this I don't know, but I thought you would appreciate it. Patricia Del Ruth, why do people drive like maniacs? I'm 111. Where the fuck are they going? <laughs> Daniel Harkax, Danielle, I'm sorry, Harkax. I can't pronounce it, fucking unbelievable. <laughs> well, don't say it like I'm supposed to fucking be able to read it like I'm a fucking moron. How do you pronounce it? Harkis. Well, fucking spell it that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm Lewis Black, I don't spell it B-L-R-H-M-T-I-Z. Black, of course it's black. I just threw those letters in to fuck with you. Okay, this is, but I love this. Two days before our wedding, our vendor told us they couldn't get apple cider. In October, in Ohio, where there is an apple orchard, true, every mile in every direction, and it's sold in every grocery store and gas station throughout the entire month. So, uh, Danielle, I think you should have gone to the store. <laughs> Because sounds like I could have, I could have catered your fucking wedding. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Moses Carson, I'm so pissed that my date Michelle brought her fucking husband on our date. Andy Vargas, I wish we had a president with balls. Andy, why do you want a president with balls? Do you want to see them? <laughs> what the fuck would a president with balls do, Andy, that would be so little, little fucking spectacular? What do the balls do, Andy? Would he run around inseminating everybody? What the fuck, when you say that, you have to follow it with what the fuck you're talking about, okay? Saying he has balls doesn't, you can't just go, because it means, like, do you want him to fight somebody? You want him to go into the Ukraine? You want him to go into, what? You want him to, to fucking go to the oil companies and just beat up people and make them make the prices lower? What do you want? Andy, fucking, you should have written, no, oh, that wouldn't be good. It was not gonna fucking happen. Even if the president had giant balls, it's not gonna happen. The president doesn't determine the price of gas. But I need to know, Andy. Huh? And it's not just, and that's to remember for all of them as they continue to wander around in front of us. The Republican who'd be elected during the price gouge when, the, when gas goes up, you can't go, oh, well, fuck that. No, they don't determine that price. But Andy, I really do want to know what you, you think. So if you could write that in, I'll read it tomorrow. <laughs> I would. I wish we had a president with balls so I could see his balls. Whatever it is. <laughs> Amy Douglas. 
the, the, the fucking unending construction on Hovely Lane East in Palm Desert. <laughs> That's true in every place I go. There's unending construction. And more's on the way now that we have Build Back Better. <laughs> You'll have a lot of construction. You'll be going, fuck, I can't believe they're fixing the road. God damn it, I gotta get to work. Um, this is Joe King. I'm not sure if he's here, but I, it, I know it's my mom's birthday is in a few days, and I thought it'd be fun to take her to see you as a gift. I'd really enjoy it if you would, uh, t would take this moment to send her two messages. The first one being, happy birthday, mom. Love your favorite son. And sex, second, use your fucking blinkers! And this is, uh, well, I'm with this because I just thought it really uh, is good and it follows what I just read really well. This is from Rob, Rob Lamb, and it was written by his 17-year-old kid for a school assignment. When I got my license, I'd worked hard up to that point, practicing and learning every rule and taking every chance I can get to achieve perfection. I finally got my license after all of that work. And a month into this, I realized something awful. Illinois people, Illinoisians, I've never seen that, Illinoisians can't drive. <laughs> Seriously, every time I turn on to McLean, it's one bad driver after another. They can't turn, they can't signal, they can't merge, and they certainly can't go the speed limit. Imagine it's a one-lane road with a 45-mile-per-hour speed limit. And if you live in Illinois, you can expect and bet on that person going 35 to 40. <laughs> Remember that Sammy Hagar song, I Can't Drive 55? I can't drive 35! <laughs> and don't even get me started on 50-mile-per-hour roads. The state tells you, yes, you may go 55 miles per hour, but... These pea brain dolts take it as be cautious, hold up traffic, and make everyone late. My dad has taught me many important things, two of them being never be late to something and that Illinois drivers are the worst, which is ironic since you're always going to be late with these drivers. I've driven in Wisconsin and Michigan, and you can tell right off the bat that it's a huge decrease in bad drivers from Illinois. I can't be free in a world full of Illinois drivers, and I feel bad when they hop on the interstate to go to other states. <laughs> They're like a virus spreading through the country. I have a challenge for anyone that's reading this. The next time you see someone with bad driving skills on the road, look at their license plate. <laughs> I swear that eight times out of ten, it's an Illinois license plate. If it isn't, then it's probably from Indiana. <laughs> The question is why? Why are they so bad? No one knows. I'm sure we'll discover dark matter or maybe even strange matter before we ever figure out what compels people to be so god awful at driving in Illinois. I can't go anywhere or get anywhere without a good problem. And one day, they might even hit me. Oops. Thank you, Rob. Thank you for your son sending that in. And it's good to know that even young people, the moment they get behind the wheel of a car, can spot the shitty driving. I will tell your son, Rob, that I've been around the United States. Um, this is one of the few places uh, where they didn't write in about that. Uh, in, normally, everywhere I go, there's at least two to three things about how shitty the drivers are here. And the reason I didn't get any of that is the people here never leave their house. <laughs> never. So they don't know what driving is. They all came on a very, very large, almost titanic, huge bus together. There's, the bus goes from place to place and picks everyone up so that they don't waste the air conditioning in their car. Because one day they may need to make an escape from here when they realize how close the sun is to their fucking heads. It's been a pleasure spending time with you in Palm Desert.
Thank you all for coming out. We'll be in San Diego tomorrow. Send in your rants and then Los Angeles on Saturday. Thank you so much. Take care of each other. Good night. Nobody likes waking up and feeling like crap, least of all me. With GhostBed, you don't need to worry about that. At GhostBed, you'll find made in the USA mattresses with premium materials and backed by 20 to 25 year warranties. Plus, take 101 nights to break it in with their sleep trial. Listeners can get 30% off mattresses plus two free pillows or 40% off GhostBed bundles with a mattress and adjustable base. Use promo code LEWIS, L-E-W-I-S, at ghostbed.com slash Lewis for a limited time. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. How do you feel about online shopping? We all do it so much these days. Well, because it's convenient. I do it because I'm on the road all the time. But it's also frustrating because we all get to that point in the checkout where we're prompted to enter a promo code and we don't have one. God, how come everybody else has one and we don't have one? Damn it, we could have saved some money. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for a coupon code is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. It's so simple. When you're shopping on your favorite website and go to checkout, the Honey button appears. All you have to do is click Apply Coupons and wait a few seconds while Honey searches for coupon codes. If it finds one, you watch the price drop. You know, I once bought some Honey on Honey. No, I'm kidding. I just made that up. Uh, But I've purchased a number of things, and I've got that Honey app, and I have to say, one of the great things is, is that when you think that, did I really get the right price? Honey arrives to tell you that you did. And if you didn't, with certain things that I've gotten, boop, they'd make it a little cheaper. Remarkable. Also, you should know that Honey doesn't just work on the desktop. It works on your iPhone, too. Just activate it on the Safari browser on your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by you using it, you're supporting this podcast and something that I've used. That's why I'm recommending you go and get Honey for free by going to www.joinhoney.com slash Lewis. That's joinhoney.com slash Lewis. It's easy. I did it. If I did it, anybody can. We're in uh, beautiful San Diego in, uh, in, the, in the lovely Balboa Theater where I've spent uh, many a night performing. I used to I've come to... San Diego. San Diego is one of the stops that I made early on, and I think that it was called the Baja Comedy Club. I'm serious. No. I, it, yeah, it wasn't. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and uh, but there, but I believe it was, and and that'll show how many of you came out to see me. Uh, <laughs> But it was really, it was literally right down by the water. It was right near fucking uh, SeaWorld or whatever the fuck that is. I'm serious. There was me, you could come see me, or fucking the killer whales. It was <laughs> phenomenal. Uh, we are in San Diego, San Diego. They played here tonight, and, and folks still poured in to see my show because... Uh, um, because... We printed um, counterfeit tickets and said there would be beer here and there'd be a large screen and they could watch the game with me. So a few of, a few of the folks are a little angry tonight. Um, <laughs> and, I have, and I have truly one of the drunkest women sitting to stage left. And, it's, and she's been, she's very charming. And, and luckily she, she's found a husband and... Uh, and, and I think it's great. I mean, really. And you, but no, you've been a sweetheart for a while. For a while. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. Oh, did you know what she said? She, she's your spirit animal? Wow, and, and you just, did you know her before? You just showed up at the theater and... She started talking, you went, that's my spirit animal? Uh, well, 
Lewis Black creating threesomes wherever he goes. All right, we got to get this going. This is really, uh, it, 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 stop, stop, stop. They can't hear you. So do have to zip it here. Uh, you can check it out later or go online. I'm sure there's a place, Twitter, there's some fucking place. You can TikTok each other, I don't give a shit. Okay. From David Rose, if New York is the Big Apple due to people flocking there to make it, San Diego is more like a rotten tomato. Wow, due to the rotten fruit smell, its nickname should be the filthy whore. Yeah, well, that's, I'm telling you, I told you. If you can't make it anywhere, come here, where you can drop off the grid and live in a box. Put that on a fucking billboard. Wow. Uh, a, there's a certain level of I I interesting bitterness in this town. <laughs> Meredith Sweeto or Sweeto Sweeto, I think. I hate it when the kombucha isn't cold, the yoga isn't hot, and, Bio and, the B and my Biore store doesn't have the cactus green performance jogger in stock. That's a rough day in San Diego. <laughs> this is from Charles Clay. What the fuck, Lewis? I'm one of maybe three black people here at your San Diego show. Where are all the brothers at? Trevor Noah would kick your ass over this shit. I feel like I'm at a goddamn Al Franken show. You need to do some serious outreach, man. Um, a lot of the brothers are at the game. <laughs> because my outreach, I said that, and they went, hey, fuck you, I'm gonna watch ball. I, um, if you could tell me what the outreach is, uh, I'll do it. I have no fucking idea. I'm, but I, I can't go, hey, uh, black people, come see me. I, <laughs> I do what I do. And then I hope people show up. I can only do so much. And, uh, and I'm, I'm on Twitter and TikTok and Fucknut and Sweatback and Bobo. <laughs> if you can tell me how to do it, Charles, send it in and I'll fucking do it. If you know what the secret is, I'll fucking do it. Okay? I'm serious. Because uh, I do know that I have a, uh, because of Trevor, I've ended up every, um, Every fucking uh, cab driver who's Indian in New York is a huge fucking fan now. Every Indian cab driver. I get in the cab, I start talking, it's you! They just, they fucking, it's in it's my cab, oh! Now, would I know how to get to them otherwise? No, they don't know where my fucking show is. So, let me know. Oh, yeah, this is from J Jason Spore. I'm happy to be here with you tonight in San Diego. I've lived in four states, driven through plenty of them, and it's the same goddamn thing in every one of them. These giant ass four door, 0.6 mile per gallon lifted trucks with the tires up to your chest and the mirrors that stick out four feet. You know the ones, they're usually backed into the space mark, economy or, or EV charging only. And why do the drivers always have to back these fuckers in? They're clearly no damn good at it, since they're always taking up two or more spaces. Years of my life, I've wasted away in parking lots and garages, waiting on people trying to shittily park and repark these monstrosities over and fuck, over and fuck, over again. It's time to put them all out to pasture. to pasture on a farm where a truck has an actual fucking purpose. The environmental impact and the myriad of other Venn diagram crossovers with these trucks in them, those are rants for another day. Thank you for truly for letting me know that I'm not alone in how I feel about things or in how I respond to them and for giving us a way to laugh at these atrocious things while still fighting the good fight against authoritarianism and the bullshit artists dragging us toward it. Thank you, Jason.
Erica Spinelli, our kids school went into 100 degree weather with no fucking operative air conditioning. Wow, that's like sending him to a North Korean prison camp. Our award-winning school district invested our taxes in fucking junk bonds and couldn't fix the HVAC and then gave our kids three weeks of half days. I feel like a satisfied taxpayer and parent. Fucking not, those fuckers. Jackie Dewar, my husband who was with me tonight doesn't eat onions. It's so limiting and cramps my style. I don't, that may be the first time that anyone has said that their partner's not eating on, onions cramps their style. Uh, this is Adam Sussman. Could you please tell my neighbors on the Next Door app, which is an unbelievable app, which is why I'm glad I live in a, they don't do that in New York. People just punch you if you. <laughs> Tell my neighbors on the next door app all their shit about rats, what kind of spider is this, and the meth house down the street that won't shut their damn toothless yappers too, with all due respect. Shut the fuck up! Yours, and quite sincerely at the end of my wits, Mark, and his personal ball washer, Adam. David Schwartzstein, why the fuck couldn't the Mets win so that there wouldn't be a Padres game during Louis San Diego show? <laughs> Jacking parking fees to damn near $100 for the night down here. Uh, that was my idea. <laughs> they were really cheap and I said, fuck that man, we're gonna jack, is that it really some fucking it. <laughs> They get there two days, boy, they must, it's, um, I thought about it today, that, that when a, a town, when they're going toward that, playing in the playoffs, the, fu the, the fucking businesses around that stadium, they must be in church 24 seven. Come on, fuckers, come on, you son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, this is finally from uh, Allison Patton. I leave you with this, because it's quite splendid. Uh, and she's here tonight with her family, which I think is important to note. <laughs> Divisiveness in America is worse than ever, and one issue in particular has pushed me over the edge. It's an issue so personal that no amount of debate makes a difference. Neither side ever changes their position. I think you know what I'm talking about, Lewis. Yes, I'm referring to the great divide over how to load a dishwasher. <laughs> On one side, you have the anarchists who toss toss their horribly soiled, unrinsed dishes into the dishwasher without a care. There's a callousness there, a disregard for any sense of order. I don't know for sure, but I think these are the same people who started Antifa. <laughs> On the other side, you have the annoying as fuck self-righteous dish loaders who believe they alone possess the truth with the same conviction Moses had coming down the mountain with the Ten Commandments. These pompous assholes feel it's their life mission to show all the rest of us the right way to load a dishwasher. You can easily spot those righteous fucks at potlucks and family gatherings. They're the ones hovering around the dishwasher after the meal. They act like do-gooders, offering to clean up, but we know their dark little secret. <laughs> they, they, they can't stand the thought of anyone else loading the dishwasher. Holy fuck, we're talking about dirty dishes. Get over yourself. You're not a NASA engineer packing the space shuttle for a long year's mission in space. You don't get into heaven for fitting in those three extra plates. This isn't a talent. It's a goddamn psychological disorder, you smug motherfucker. Just stop it, you're driving us all crazy, son of a bitch. I'm quite sure there are a lot of folks 
here tonight that they know what I'm talking about, Lewis, because you see, I've been doing my own informal survey. <laughs> what I've observed is that nearly every American family has at least one self-appointed, pious prig who wants to control the family dishwasher. <laughs> I have two in my immediate family, and I've been married to one for 25 years, 24 years. My husband will actually unload and rearrange the dishes I just loaded. Why? Because I had the nerve to load a large mixing bowl that could have been washed by hand. And of course, my greatest sin of all, I failed to rinse everything to his satisfaction. Son of a bitch! That is the greatest irony of all, Lewis. My husband rinses the dishes so thoroughly, we don't need a dishwasher. <laughs> our, dishwasher, our dishwasher is actually just a tool for him, a way to fuck with me. <laughs> time after time, I'll have just finished unloading the last piece of silverware into the drawer. A chore well done, relishing that sense of satisfaction, only to have my husband dash into the kitchen and crow triumphantly, nope, hadn't run it yet. <laughs> this, this Lewis is psychological warfare, and it wears you down year after year, one load at a time. <laughs> I have only one thing to say to my husband, my sister, my friend Eve, and all the other zealots out there, and you know who you are. <laughs> Stop fucking with us. This isn't China or Russia. It's America. We load our dishes any way we goddamn want. You sanctimonious pricks. Stick that in your dishwasher and run it. Thank you, Allison. Thank you all. Thanks, San Diego. Tomorrow night we'll be in Los Angeles and then up to uh, Portland and Bellingham and Eugene and Seattle. We look forward to it. Take care of each other. It's been so much fun to be with you tonight. Thanks to all of you for listening to my rant. If you have a rant you want to get off your chest, send it in to me at lewisblack.com forward slash live. You can think of it as therapy or whatever you want to think of it as. Just let it rip. And I want to thank the true stars of our show, the ranters and the splendid rants they gave us. Lewis Black's Rantcast was created and hosted by me. Aha, Lewis Black. Our live rant audio was produced by James Salter theme song by Chris Lane. Executive producer, Ben Brewer. Executive producers, Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly for the Laugh Button Podcast.